went down to uh, Antarctica around 1928. Stayed there for a couple of years. Television, sports, all your entertainment, it's all bullshit. They had to come up with something to keep you distracted, to keep you tuned in. Are you sure about that? My belief is that uh, I don't think it took Alma Bird 30 years to figure out, or our country to figure out what the Earth is flat, what we'll government would dome. I think it only took about two years. Of course, we had a couple of world wars that were in the middle of that, but I think it only took a couple of years for them to really figure it out. And that's why television was introduced, that's why comedians were introduced. Wrong, 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 wrong. According to Britannica.com, the word comedy seems to be connected by derivation with the Greek verb meaning to revel. And comedy arose out of the revels associated with the rites of Dionysus, a god of vegetation. The origins of comedy are thus bound up with vegetation ritual. Aristotle, in his Poetics, states that comedy originated in phallic songs and that, like tragedy, it began in improvisation. Though tragedy evolved by stages that can be traced, the progress of comedy passed unnoticed because it was not taken seriously. When tragedy and comedy arose, poets wrote one or the other according to their natural bent. Those of the graver sort, who might previously have been inclined to celebrate the actions of the great in epic poetry, turned to tragedy. Poets of a lower type, who had set forth the doings of the ignoble in invectives, turned to comedy. The distinction is basic to the Aristotelian differentiation between tragedy and comedy. Tragedy imitates men who are better than the average, and comedy men who are worse. 1928, 1930, 1937, 1931, and I'm just, see, I like to play with numbers, okay, and, uh, anyway, take a 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, so I, I got to a conclusion with all these numbers, see, they're, they're all satanic numbers, satanic years. What the hell did you just say? So 1928, 1930, 1937, and 1931 are satanic years? How? Okay, you have to understand that, and that's how they work. Okay. And I come up with a final number of uh, 422. That's April 22nd. Or verse 422 in the Bible. Which verse 422? There are quite a few of those, CC. Now, I usually don't become biblical about this, but God is our creator. We all know that. We've accepted it if you're a flood earther because then obviously everything around us is created from whoever it may be, he or she. That verse at 422. Whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And forever is hidden is meant to be brought out. Oh, CC. Because all you said was 422. I had to go look up the words you were quoting and find out which book and chapter and verse it was from. Thank you so much. And for those wondering, it's from Mark 4. And the words he's quoting are from the Sermon on the Mount. So what C.C. is doing is actually fitting the verse to his narrative, which we all know the verses of the Bible are all open to interpretation, but they don't necessarily mean what we think they mean. So figuring out all these years when we supposedly went to Antarctica and, you know, the military parade and, and all sorts of stuff, and I come up with 422. I think there's the next event that's going to happen on that date. That's my guess. That's my calculations. 422. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! Ready. 
So you've got about, uh, what is it, 26? You've got about four weeks. Stock up or do whatever you have to do. Okay. Um, I'm about to show you a video of when I was growing up. And um, <clears throat> this is going back to 19, circa 1983. Okay. And this is the um, indoctrination they've been doing. Hollywood, that is. You know, I want to get into one other thing, too. This is MTV, okay? MTV really didn't get started until... 1981. Christ. The early 80s. Pretty much this was one of the first... Well, not one of the first ones. You know, I Want My MTV was another one, and I met some other ones. But, I mean, this is probably one of the top 20 videos that was ever brought out. So you have to understand that they really didn't know what they were doing back then. They were just putting out videos, you know, and they weren't really scripting these things. Um, the artists didn't know what the hell they were doing. They had their own song and, and their own thing going on here. And I think it was probably through Hollywood that said, you know what, you should put this in the background. You should put that in the background. All right, and let's indoctrinate everybody. All right, and let's get him started. And I think this is what this is all about. Are you serious? All right, so this is circa 1983. Uh, this is the Arrhythmics, Sweet Dreams. Uh, you get the drift, okay? You've got a planet in the background, you've got her pointing back there, um, you've got, it starts off with a rocket right there, and then you've got the planet, and then you've got the astronauts in the background, which we don't really know what the hell they're doing, because they're really never doing anything but nonsense. Uh, they're, <laughs> uh, when, when, when NASA used to have their live feed, which I think they discontinued, uh, they used to go out there and just kind of put some wiring and whatever they're doing, you know, oh yeah. That's great. They, yeah, they couldn't figure that out when the, when the rocket took off. Because when it took off, there was a lot of wind and uh, atmospheric condition. You're an idiot! Uh, when they did this. So I don't think these artists really ever had an idea. I forget what her name is, but again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shout out to the Arrhythmics. That was that video. Her name is Annie Lennox. My God, do you not research anything, CC? So anyway, um, I, I wanted to point that out to you. This is one of many, many uh, videos. And, and I mean, if, you know, you've seen people do the movies. You've seen people do the uh, movies that we grew up with. Uh, I, I mean, if you're in the, you know, if you were born in 93, you have other movies that are probably being shown to you that you've been indoctrinated to. If you were born in 2003, well, uh, you're only about 15 years old. I'm sure you've had movies too. But this is going back to the early 80s when MTV first started. This is when raw video used to come out. The artists didn't know what to do. Hollywood told them what to do, you know? And they probably told her what to do. I forget what her name is. Very pretty woman. Um, I don't know what she looks like now. It's been a long time, but, you know, back in the day. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, what, 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 what choice do they have? You know, you've got to make a video. My point is the indoctrination has started way back in the early 80s, even going back to the 70s, even going back to, I, I, I hate to say it, and it was my favorite show, The Honeymooners, of all things. I'm going to look into that, too. I'm going to see where the numbers are, you know. Um, I mean, it's, it's been implanted in our brain. And people don't understand this, you know. Um. Well, CC, as I have shown in this video already, your future self contradicted you. The future CC said the indoctrination happened after Admiral Byrd went to Antarctica in 1928 to 1930 and was due to TV in the 40s. I mean, never mind the radio shows people used to listen to and the movies that started back in 1888. Oh, no, it was all due to TV in the 1940s. Do you ever play your videos back and listen to yourself, Cece? It's quite amusing. If you haven't seen it, 
Like you didn't watch MTV back in 1983, which you know, really, it really sucked back then. But it was MTV video, and people needed something to go along with their music. Why, I have no idea, and that's why MTV is so popular right now. For myself, I just needed the music. I enjoyed the music. I liked listening to the music. Why do I get the feeling you used to love watching MTV and loved the music and the videos? I don't know why you're putting on this old man Simpsons vibe right now. It's not a good look and you're making yourself old before your time. <laughs> See, I have a bowl of water here. Oh, it's very difficult to keep in place. It might spill over. Oh, good gosh. It might spill over at some point. You know, there's only one thing capturing it. And that's the bowl. Apparently, on our planet, if you think we live on that, which we don't, there's gravity that's holding in all of this water around, around our planet. You are correct, sir! Yes! <laughs> it's impossible. It's preposterous. It's a joke to keep you asleep.